Gemini, hi, welcome to your read for this week. We are going to be looking at your tarot, Celtic cross that is, and these are YouTube general readings, so if they don't resonate with you, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they won't always resonate with you. If you like a reading that does resonate with you, feel free to reach out to me, and my email's in the description below. What I do is I get your astrological information, your birth date, your birth time, and your birth place. And I tailor your birth information, what's going on with you in space, along with your tarot read. To get you the best possible advice. Um, and if not, then just stick with the YouTube generals. This is going to be a Celtic cross. And at the end, I'm going to do a mini pick a card. But I'm going to tailor the question for the pick a card according to what comes out in the Celtic cross. Okay, Aries had an interesting one, and the Taurus had a kind of very basic Nancy <laughs> pick a card. But yeah, so far, it's chugging along. And this is something I decided to come up with. And I got to thank you guys, because a lot of you, when you leave the comments, you're like, Which, what should I do then? What should I do? So that's why I'm adding the little pick a card at the end. Okay. And it's true. That's kind of annoying. Even when I used to watch tarot, it was like, well, what do I do? <laughs> Even the universal advice seemed to kind of make me think. But, you know, that is what tarot's supposed to do, make you think. So... It did its job. Eight of Wands is your energy. Communication. You want communication from this person you love. You love them. And I think you'd get it. Let's see here. <clears throat> hmm. Somebody's moving. One of you is moving. Hmm. We'll get to that later. I'm not sure what that's about. Eight of Wands with the Ten of Chalices being challenged, emotional fulfillment. You know what I think is a lot of you want communication from a certain person here because you think that's what's going to bring you some sort of emotional fulfillment here. Um, in the underlying energies, there's a whole lot of love between two people here. But I feel like it's just in the underlying energy. It's in the unseen. It's not in the physical because it's under the energies. Okay, so this is difficult when a tarot card reader says there's a whole lot of love energetically. Energetically, it may be there, but this person probably doesn't even think about you or care about you, like, in the sense. And I know how that feels. I'm, I'm not trying to, like, get you sad, mad, or depressed. I know how that feels. You know, how could this person not think about you know, me or like the the things I'm going through. And, you know, and that sucks. <clears throat> and it's really disappointing because you'd really want somebody that, you know, you may have shared a past with here to really think about what's going on with you. And maybe it's just, just not. It's not connecting. But energetically, they're showing up. There's a reason for that. In the past, Nine of Chalices, this is something you wished for. You wanted you wanted this and you got it. And you got the wish fulfillment. The problem with wish fulfillment is that <clears throat> a lot of the times it requires a lot of work. And then it can mentally tire you out here. You know, this person's kind of tired. After he's achieved his dream, after he's attained what he wanted emotionally... It's there, but I feel like because the 9 and the 10 are here, you never really reached that 10. So even though this was kind of a wish fulfilled, it wasn't total fulfillment. Because it didn't paint the picture of, I got everything I wanted here in this, you know, it could have been manifestations for some of you. Or just a picture that you were painting with a certain person here. <clears throat> King of Wands is your strength, though. I like King of Wands. Leo. Yeah, my little line ring there. I like King of Wands there. I like him in your strength because it's it's you putting check marks on the things you want for your kingdom. And you know, if the people you love aren't showing up, 
oh boy, does this king know how to burn bridges? And I feel like your strength is to burn the bridge, but you're not doing it. You're not burning that bridge. You're leaving that bridge wide open for this person to cross. And I know, because I'm the tarot card reader, I know what happens when they try to cross this bridge. You would be like, no, when they cross that bridge, I'm going to love them. I'm going to welcome them back. I think things are going to change for you here. Because there's a lot of mental work going on with you here in the future. This is really like your prison here. This person is literally your prison. 12th house, you may have 12th house placements jumbled up with this person. But this, 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 this is just... Some of you may have Mongol together, like you guys may have Mars in your 1st, your 5th, your 7th, your 12th, your 8th. You may have those Mars placements in those houses with this person that causes the Mongol. Which is a sign for Mars and it's in an auspicious place because that's what it means. It's, it's in a place that causes separations, it causes fights, arguments, accidents too. I feel like you're leaving this bridge open for this person to cross. But by the time they cross, because this king is good at burning bridges, when they're halfway through that bridge, you're going to burn that bridge. Your mind's telling you you want that. But I feel like the planets may be doing something else here. And I'm just being led to have this conversation. And you read, Gemini. When this person crosses the bridge, you're ready to burn it. And you're ready to let them hang and fall into wherever that bridge is hanging over. Hell, a river, <laughs> a lake, an ocean. I don't know. But this is some deep, deep emotional things that this king has to say and do. And I feel like you're leaving the bridge open for them. That is a message and a half. Now... Like I said, what you don't see, right? I said I'm the tarot card reader. I know it. I see something being cut here. Some for some of you, this may be a divorce, or a divorce to happen, or some of you, some of you may have gotten like a sinistry read, and somebody you may have had the astrologer tarot card reader tell you, oh, you know, this is your future spouse. Well, it could have been, but it doesn't mean that you got married to them. You know, just sleeping with somebody and inviting them into your home marries you. It does. Energetically, it marries you to somebody. Loving somebody, seeing being their boyfriend, girlfriend, energetically, you guys are married here. Doesn't mean you won't find a new one and that's that's gone. You know, I had a talk with, <clears throat> I believe it was the Aries read, you know, that just because we have one soulmate doesn't mean we can't have another one or create a new soulmate or even train a new soulmate. <laughs> but you're cutting somebody off here hard. Woo! Four chalices, yeah, you know. Your advice is to go with things that fulfill you. You have a lot of cups in this read, the 10, the 9 to the 10. And then back to the four here for your advice, saying, you know, the things that aren't fulfilling you, you need to just, like, ignore and move on to the things that do fulfill you. There's actually offers here showing up. Why are you paying attention to the little tidbits of things that don't even matter anymore these three cups here that you kind of want maybe or that never brought you the promise the universe is bringing you one more cup there and it's time to go towards that ace of chalices this is the one cup here your hopes and fears you want a soulmate you want somebody to love you want some emotional connection it's coming and it's being delivered by the universe For some of you, I heard move as soon as I saw the card. I know that's really um, the cookie cutter definition of the chariot here, but I love this. It's it's action. Some of you want to know if you reach out to the person or not. If you create that action, I think I know what our pick a card is going to be about. Do you reach out to this person or not? Is it going to be you that reaches out? Or should it be them? Either way, I feel like you will burn the bridge. Let's see what happens with the pick a card. Um, for some of you, you may be moving away. 
and you want to reach out to the person before you move away, I think it would be healthy because maybe it closes things off, especially with Saturn moving forward now. Things and putting up boundaries, that may be a healthy boundary for you to actually do that. <clears throat> This read is a Gemini read and a half. I'll tell you that. All right, I want you to pick a number, one or two, okay? I'm going to answer yes or no, whether you reach out to your person. Now, there's another group here, the one that are moving. I say already yes, okay? So if you don't need to do the pick a card if you're moving uh, away from this person. I say do it. Just do it because it's going to help you bring closure whether it's a good thing or bad thing. Ooh. Now, for those of you that aren't moving, pick one card or the other because it's going to be one or two of you or a couple of... Sorry, not one or two. Ah. It's going to be a couple of you that want to know if you reach out to this person or not. Okay? <clears throat> so one or two. And you can't change your number after I give all the answers. <laughs> well, I was originally thinking I should go to two. No, nah, just pick one or two, okay? Okay. Group one, no. Uh, Wheel of Fortune, they'll reach out to you. When? I don't know. <laughs> could be a long time, though, because it's Jupiter, so it could be like in a one-year cycle. Jupiter takes... One year to move out of one house, so depending, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Could be one year, a year and some uh, change. Sorry, not a year, but it, it takes one year and some change to move because it retrogrades and then it comes back. So maybe next year around Jupiter retrogration, 2023, that's when you could see them kind of trickle back in when they trickle back into Aries here. But no, I wouldn't reach out. <clears throat> um, this is more of a new things are coming and there's going to be blessings coming your way. So why would you want to go back to this when it's not doing anything for you? No. I, I'm not going to do you justice and say, oh, it's the Wheel of Fortune, lucky card. No, it's lucky because there's something coming your way without you having to create action. Okay? Let's do tarot the healthy way. <laughs> um, for group two, High Priestess, <clears throat> you guys get a yes. But hold on, don't don't pick up the phone and text them just yet. Hold on, you guys get a yes. But before I give you the yes, I need you guys to sit down and contemplate what's going on here. And you know, High Priestess isn't a contemplation card. She's more of a I know already. You guys already know already. When you reach out, it'll fail. That's why I say yes. But you guys already know if you reach out, you're already blocked or something or. Maybe you don't even want to reach out to them. You want them to reach out to you to give you that effort. I see that. Or this is maybe you trying to do like night manifestations before the sun rises for them to send you a text message and all that. Look, whatever works for you, <laughs> go for it. Um, you know, so it's funny because I say yes, but I know a lot of you are like, it should have been a no or like, I don't know. Is a really awkward feeling with the high priest. She, I love high priest. She's a bad bitch. So, you know, for some of you that want to be that bad bitch or that bad dude, you know, don't reach out. Be cold. Mm. And spend time with your friends. This isn't a side advice. Spend, if you pick group two, you got friends that you neglect maybe or your friends are trying to get you to come out or something. Spend time with your friends. That's all I got for the lovely Gemini. Sexy Geminis. I'll see you guys again next week. Take it easy. Bye.